Last time we proved part A of the Kraft Macmillan theorem, Macmillan's part. And part B, Kraft's part, says that for any set of lengths satisfying this inequality, there exists a BRE prefix code with those lengths. Now to prove this in general, one has to take a given such set of lengths and construct sort of abstractly a prefix code with those lengths. And rather than go through the general formal proof of this, I wanted to just work out a couple examples to demonstrate the main idea, to demonstrate the construction. Because the formal proof, the notation really obscures the main idea of, of what's going on and makes things more confusing than they really are. So once you see the, the basic idea in some examples, then it will be easy for you to turn it into a proof if you wanted to. Okay, so let's set things up here. So we have our set X and let's, let's just label its elements X1, X2, and so forth. They might be finitely many, there may be infinitely many, but we can always label them because it's assumably countable. And let's also call L subscript I, just to simplify life a tad, let's call that L of XI. And furthermore, let's call L, a little bit ambiguous here, but not too bad, the sequence of these L's, the, a vector in the, in the finite case, L1, L2, L3, and so on. Now, the first thing that is important is that this sequence be non-decreasing. In other words, that L1 is less or equal to L2, and so on. So it's in increasing order. So this is important. Increasing order. And you may be a little bit concerned at this point because what if our original x's were, were not in such a way that this was in increasing order? But that's not so bad. We can always arrange for them to be in increasing order because we just gave these x's arbitrary labels here. We can choose the, the ordering of the x's. We can just label these so that the, their corresponding l's are in increasing order. Okay, so now the construction is going to, to use B airy expansions b area expansions and in the case when b is 2 which the examples will do here will be this is just binary expansions of fractional numbers so if you have a number between 0 and 1 we're going to represent it in binary so here's how we're going to do that it's just the usual thing but you may may or may not be familiar with it that is 1 half or 1 over 2 to the 1 this is for b equals 2 here. 0 0.01 we will use to denote 1 over 2 to the 2. 0 0.001 is 1 over 2 to the 3, and so on. So you, you are certainly familiar with decimal expansion. So the, the equivalent thing in decimal, you know, you would write 0 0.1 for 1 over 10 to the 1 and 0 0.001 for 1 over 10 to the 2, and so forth. And for decimal expansions, we also have something like this, where it would be 2 over 10 to the 1. So the only difference here is that sort of the, the, the base is changed from 10 to 2. And more generally, if you had, so this would be b equals 10. For some other base, you would put that b in the denominator. So in general, you would have you would have just that. Okay, so when you add these guys, these these binary ones, for example, you have to carry things a little bit differently than you would in the decimal case. So when you add these guys, let's say you add 0 0.01 to 0 0.01 in, uh, in binary expansions, then you can't have 0 0.02 because that's not in binary, so you have to carry, so you carry the one. And another ex quick example, maybe if we had, you know, something where we had to carry twice, 0 0.001, then what's this? Well, we add these, we have to carry a 1, but then we have to add that to a 1, we have to carry another 1, and we get 0 
And of course, you can always, you know, the this representation is only unique up to adding additional zeros. So, you know, if we had some some binary fraction 0 0.101, then that's the same as 0 0.1010, and I could add another zero or however many zeros I wanted. So this, for example, just to complete the cycle, this would, of course, be 1 over 2 to the 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 3. So it, it's good to start getting familiar with these binary expansions, binary expansions especially, because later when we do arithmetic coding, we're going to make extensive use of binary expansions. Okay, so now let's do an example. Let's first do a simple example. We'll do the example that the, our our famous example A from before when we had when we had um, we had the code. It was you know A B C and D. C of A was zero. C of B was uh, one. What was it? One yeah one zero I think. Uh, one one zero and one 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 yeah i think that was it so in this code we had the following lengths we had one two three and three so let's see let's maybe just starting from those lengths let's apply the procedure so now we're going to hide this we're going to assume that we don't know you know we're we're not assuming this code now we're just going to take these lengths so we're so let's take l equals one, two, three, and three. So I'm using this notation here for the lengths. And here's the procedure that we're going to use to construct a prefix code with these lengths. Now, first of all, we, we know already that we, you know, from before we, and we, when we computed the sum, you know, when we added uh, one over two to those lengths up, we know that this was equal to 1 so we know that that according to craft we ought to be able to construct such a prefix code a binary prefix code so here b is 2 b is 2 that's why i'm using twos b is 2 so here's what we're going to do let's visualize the sum of these numbers as sort of stacking up some blocks so let's say we have this is going to be an interval from 0 to 1 0 to 1 and we're gonna just say we have a block first of size 1 over 2 so we have a block and that the height of that block is 1 half and then we have another block and its height is 1 quarter and we're we're stacking these up and since our lengths were in non-decreasing order, they were in increasing order, then the size of these successive blocks is always getting smaller and smaller. So the first one was a half, then we add a quarter, an eighth, and one eighth. And if we were to add up, you know, if we were to look at what these points along the interval are, well, they're going to be, of course, one half, three quarters, and seven eighths. Okay, very simple. Now let's write this these guys out in their binary expansions. So what is that? Well, that one's just 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 .001, and 0 0.001. And let's do the same thing for these numbers over here. Let's write these out. Well, 0 is just, well, we could write 0, 0.0 or something equals zero I'll just put zero point for now and this is of course the same as that but now we have to add so let's add these two binary numbers we have to add we have to add this to this so we have to add 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 and we did that I think that was one of the examples we did before that's 0 0.11 and now we have to add this 0 0.001 to 0 0.11 and that's just 0 0.111. And of course, one is, well, one is one. We could, you know, you could have an infinite sequence of, you know, you could have 0 0.111111, but we're not, it's not going to be important for, for this one. So let's just ignore that for the moment. 
Okay, now let's write over, where should we, maybe over here? Um, actually, let me, yeah, let me put it over here. Let's number these guys. So we have K and LK. So the first thing here, we'll say one, two, three, four, just number them off. And now we'll look at the length, that, that length. So this was one, two, three, and three. So I'm just lining these up with these these boundaries of the blocks. Now, okay, so what? where are we going? We wanted to construct a code. And so here's how we're going to, we're going to grab a code off of this representation. So we're going to make these binary representations of the, the, the boundaries between these intervals have that we're going to extend them to LK places. So the first one we're going to take to one place. So we take it to one place. The second one we take to two places. So we need a one zero. The third one we take to three places. So now we have one one zero. And this one's already in three places, so we just have one one one. And now look, that is that's exactly the code. Well at least the 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 the, the fractional part, the part right of the point there. So the code is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And in fact, this is, of course, a prefix code. We already knew that. But now we have a new sort of perspective on this prefix code. We see how you could derive it, how you could, how you could obtain it by looking at the representation of these lengths in sort of this this inverted sort of 1 over b to the l thing and adding them up and interpreting those as the numbers in binary representation to a certain number of places so that's the construction for this this simple little example and let's do another one let's do one uh, one that's maybe a little more involved so you can start to see a little more how to generalize it. So let's now take, let's also, we'll, we'll keep b equals 2, and let's just pick some lengths here. So let's say 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, and I'm picking them in non-decreasing order, and maybe skip 5, we'll throw a big one in there, 6. So now, what are the corresponding numbers 2 to the minus L K? Well, we're going to have 1 over 2 to the 2 is 1 over 4. 1 over 2 to the 3 is 1 eighth. 1 eighth. 1 sixteenth. 1 sixteenth. And the next one, well, 5 would be 1 over 32, so 6 is 1 over 64. Okay, so these are our numbers in that sum. And remember before, we, we represented that by stacking up these blocks in order. So let's do the same thing. Oh, well, first maybe we should check. If we added all these up, would we get something less or equal to 1? That's what we need for a craft to apply. So let's see, 1 fourth plus another fourth is going to be half, plus an eighth is 5 eighths, or 5 eighths, and then... Another eighth gives us six eighths and a sixty-fourth, so we're well under one. Okay, so things are things are looking fine. So what would be that would be? I guess let's see. Um, to get to sixty-four, we need to multiply eight over eight. That would give us forty-eight over sixty-four plus one over sixty-four. So it's forty-nine over sixty-four. Okay. So let's now do the same thing that we did above. Let's draw a picture. Maybe we'll draw a big, big. I have room. Yeah, maybe make a big. Uh, well, let's leave that there so we can see it. Okay. So let's draw our boxes here. I'm going to go up. Maybe I won't go all the way to one so I have room. So let's see. So let's say we're going to have the first one is going to be a quarter. So maybe I'll make that a little bigger than a quarter so we actually have room to get to. Maybe I won't. Actually, let me not do these exactly to scale, because otherwise it's going to be impossible to read. So 
So that was a quarter, eighth, 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 sixteenth, sixteenth. Should be even smaller, but you get the idea, just so we can have room to write. And then a sixty-fourth. Okay, and it's there's more to go. So anyway, so this is zero way down here, and this is one. Certainly not to scale. And now let's write in our numbers here. So we have one fourth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one sixteenth, one sixteenth, and this little guy here is one sixty fourth. So the next step, what did we do next? Well, we, we wrote down the binary expansions and then we added up the binary expansion. So let's do the same thing. So here we have 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, 0 0.001, and the last one, maybe I'll squeeze it in here. It's this guy, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 6, right, because that was 4, that's 6. And let, now we have to add them up, so let's do that over here. So we have 1 fourth, let's see, then we add an eighth to a fourth, we get 3 eighths, then we get a half, so let's just put 4 eighths, 5 eighths, then we have uh, 5 eighths plus a sixteenth, what's that? That's uh, 11 sixteenths, 12 sixteenths, and the last guy we said I think was 49 sixty-fourths, yeah. Okay, so now let's write these, these in binary. So let's do zero point, then we have that one just 0.01, 0.011, we add this, and we add, ah, now, so we add that this again, and we have to carry, 1, 0, 0. And now we have, add another one of those, 101, and add this guy, 1011. And the last we have to carry yet again, so we have one one zero zero, and we don't need to do the last one. Okay, so now let's put following our procedure. I'll, I'll do it in the same style. So we put K over here and L. So the first thing was so we just numbered these off one two three four five six seven we only need to go to seven and then the lengths what were the lengths the lengths were two three 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 four four six so we have two three 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 four four six and so we need to take each of these out to the sixth or ra uh, rather to the to the l kth place so the first one needs to go to two places Point zero zero this one it'll do a slightly different color so you can differentiate that 0, 0. This goes to 3 places. That's already 3, 3, 4, 4, 6. And our code words then are, well, we just read them off here. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so now we have our purported set of code words, and if all has gone according to plan, these ought to be prefix. This, this set of co code words should satisfy the prefix condition, and let's see. So this one's not a prefix of any of those. That's not a prefix of any of those. That's not a prefix of any of those. And yes, we are looking good. So this is indeed, does indeed give us a prefix code for those lengths. 
and and note that they they have the the correct lengths right this one's two that was by design that we chose them to have those lengths three 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 four four and six okay so we saw at least in these these two little examples that this procedure worked it, it did give us a prefix code with those lengths but you might wonder, will this always work? I think probably after seeing these, it should be fairly clear to you how you would, you know, do, you know, if you wanted to describe this procedure in general, it should be fairly clear to you how you would go about describing it. But what might not be so clear is what is whether this always gives you a set of prefix, uh, a code which satisfies the prefix condition. Now, since this video is starting to get a little bit long, I'm going to stop here for this one. And maybe in, in the next video, I will indicate the reason why this always gives you a prefix code.